Everyone knows the big ruckus everyone is making about 6.2 balance and what jobs are good or bad. I'm stepping into the ring myself and telling you what jobs are awful and you shouldn't play. Avoid these jobs and everything about them if you want to be a decent player. Follow my advice and you'll be a top player in no time. Along the way, I'm going to put every job in a tier and show you which ones truly are the worst among the worst. Let's start with Black Mage. This job sucks, don't play it. Of all the jobs in the game, it most resembles a turret. The more you're moving around, the more you're probably losing damage. Most of your major attacks have lengthy cast times that completely cancel from the slightest movement. In heavier movement fights, you really need to learn to abuse things such as slide casting and the built-in movement tools you have. These include Swift Cast, Triple Cast, and Xenoglossy. Further, it is a selfish DPS, meaning you offer little to no party support. Instead, you have really high damage. When you learn how to play Black Mage, you really decimate the competition. True mastery is very much rewarded to you, but to get there, you really need to learn the job. Rotational mastery, fight knowledge, and much more. The main gimmick of Black Mage is the Astral Fire and Umbral Ice mechanic. You gotta swap between the two elements to keep things going. Fire to spend your MP, and ice to bring it back up. Throw in a little dot management with thunder, and you have an all-around cyclical job. And finally, Black Mage is a job that really pushes the idea of big booms. By level cap, you'll be throwing giant explosion after giant explosion. Even the ice attacks start having some decent explosions. So if you like things to be flashy, Black Mage is a good pick. It isn't fancy, but it sure does shine bright. So in summary, Black Mage is a high skill ceiling job with high reward as a result. If you like big explosions or getting some true mastery going, Black Mage is your job. A Black Mage master truly does master all encounters, for better or worse. All these terrible things make Black Mage a bad job. Why would you want to master anything? Which is why I will be putting it in the S rank tier. Next is Dancer. A bad job all around, don't touch it for any reason. The thing it excels most in is support. Of all support based jobs, Dancer beats them all out in spades. You have party wide damage buffing, defense, some healing, and most important of all is your dance partner. You designate another party member to be buffing all duty long, as long as they're using your skills correctly. Which, further putting Dancer to the exact opposite of Black Mage, is the ease of use. Every job has its more complex ideas you can implement, but Dancer treats the average player very well. Smaller pull of buttons, less complex uses for them, and overall just pleasant to play. Your main gimmick is, of course, dancing. It's a lot like Simon Says, pressing the steps as you were told. It's a very simple minigame that ends up giving you a good bit of damage when you do it. Otherwise, the job is very proc-based, with different skills randomly activating others, or giving resources. While you can expect the same results on average, it can feel like a very random job. In summary, it's a simple and sweet job. Big support, low personal damage, and generally simple to play. Which is why you should never play it. Simplicity is bad. Which is why I am putting it in the S rank tier. Machinist is next, and should be removed from the game. This is another job with few buttons, but ends up being more complex with how you want to be putting those buttons together. You have the very speedy hypercharge buff, combining with the wildfire debuff that does more damage the more attacks you do, and several things beyond that that just take the difficulty a bit higher. In exchange, you get really cool attacks like Drill, Air Anchor, and a full-on Chainsaw. Also, you get a robot that really puts the pain on enemies. The pure stylistic utility of the Macklemore toolkit is just pure fun to see in motion. Though while it has tons of style there, the party utility is all but non-existent. This puts Mac and Cheese as the selfish job for the ranged role. All jobs have some utility, but Macarena only has the utility the role itself tends to have baked in. Beyond that, you're all about putting out damage as best you can, which can be a bit of a hard sell for some people, myself included. Maybelline gameplay involves some light resource management and the previously referred to Hypercharge buff. Hypercharge allows you to use attacks with a much lower base cooldown, making the job very fast for a short period. The real issue comes with the OGCD abilities that you want to use between every weapon skill. If your ping isn't perfect, the job can feel worse than it ends up actually being. But at the very least, the job is currently based off Edgar from Final Fantasy VI. Drill, 
Chainsaw, Bio Blaster, Air Anchor, Auto Crossbow, all Edgar abilities. If you have any real nostalgia and love for that game, that alone could draw you in. So in summary, Machinist is a simple job on the surface, but ends up being a bit more complex. It has very fancy and cool to watch skills, but may end up being too fast for your hands or your ping. Which is why we're going to toss this awful job in the trash. It gets the S rank spot in the tier list. On the other end, we have the awful job that is Monk. This is another job I would say is one of the top difficult to play jobs. Even from level 1, you can see a lot of issues start to worm their way in. They have buffs, debuffs, stances, resources, and a full-on mechanic on top of all that. If you're not a fan of the extreme mastery of Black Mage, mastering Monk might be your style. The first and main mechanic is the form shifting. Your attacks and combos are intertwined into three forms that you rotate through in order. This allows for Monk to have a good flow, but leads to complexity in itself. When do you refresh your buff? When do you refresh the dot on the enemy? When do you swap to AoE instead? This alone tends to confuse new players. Its other main mechanic is Beast Chakra, gained from using perfect balance. Putting in specific form combos will give you one of three attacks with one being a fail state technically, but this interrupts the normal flow of the job, but arguably in a good way. But also, most monk mains I know, while liking monk, also have difficulties just playing the job at high levels. They're good, but not without a fight. On top of all of this, monk is often the fastest job in the game. You would need to specifically build a speed build to be faster than monk, who could also make a speed build if they really wished. The build might suck, but the point is that the job is fast. So you need to deal with the several layers of mechanics and do it quickly. But also, it's Final Fantasy VI again. This is Sabin. Your ultimate attack is even Bum Rush. Phantom Rush here. So in summary, if you'd like to have a challenge but keep mobile and melee, Monk is right up your alley. Speedy, multiple layers to manage, and the envy of many people when you get it right. But you need to get it right which is why it's such a bad job. As a result, I put it in the S rank tier. Breaking to talk about a healer, we have the awful Scholar. Don't play it. It is the only pet-based job left in the game, not that we ever had many of them. Fairies have a passive heal they throw out and are the basis of both minor and major skills in the toolkit. It's a very useful toolkit, but has an issue with ghosting. That's where some skills can be completely lost, from using specific ones right after. This is a healer on the more technical end of things. It's a barrier-based healer, providing shields beyond just healing. These essentially extend your HP bar beyond what the normal max is, though aren't actual HP extensions. This fairy is your main mechanic, moving her around to good positions and using her skills to ideal effect. That, and pure power. Scala comes with the strongest shields, able to be worth a player's max HP or more in the most extreme cases. So in exchange for some little jank, you get some extremely high power. This also translates slightly into damage too, and some support. Personally, this is my least favorite healer, but the pure power of it cannot be denied. In summary, you have power and a pet. Just be prepared for a little jank. As such, this job sucks and is why I'm going to put it into the S rank tier. For a tank, let's talk Paladin, the worst of the tanks by a mile. Why? Because it's the only one to have a shield. This gives Paladin passive mitigation no other tank gets to have. It also has some of the strongest cooldowns in the game, including their invuln. Very long cooldown, but pure invulnerability with no other downside. Otherwise, the main gimmick of Paladin is being a magical and protective tank. You have a rotation of going back and forth between physical and magical attacks, giving you periods of being allowed to fight at range. You also have healing built into those attacks later, which you also have a heal you can use. This heal ends up being a trap for newbie tanks though. I have a heal, I should use this all the time to help the healer. This will never be why you use it. It'll be for when mistakes are happening, not just because you're low on HP. That's how often newbies fall into the trap, then it needs its own note. But when the heal is useful, it is very useful. Paladin was the first tank able to just solo bosses easily, 
mostly the casual content. Their heal single-handedly could carry the day for better or worse. Often worse because soloing a boss from 50% to zero wasn't worth it. The point is you have some good flexibility and survivability. This survivability can be passed on to your team too. You can select a party member to give a defensive boost that gets stronger with you using defensives at the same time, or outright take all damage for a party member with cover. This latter skill is extremely difficult to use properly, but can save people. On the downside, you tend to have fewer cooldowns on average. So summarily, you have very strong defensives, but few of them. You're both magical and physical, and it flows very well back and forth. Which obviously is awful and deserves an S rank placement. One of the new jobs to end Walker is a Reaper. It's awful. It's extremely flashy, but also a bit edgy if that's your thing. It's much more on the easier end of jobs. Fewer buttons to achieve your goal, but many different skills that replace other skills. All of them wishy wooshy. It being a simple job doesn't make it boring, not by a long shot. You have two gauges to manage. Where you hold and where you use them for the biggest bursts is important. But also, it's very easy to gain one of those gauges, making it a bit of an actual balance rather than just saving it. If you save too well, you end up overcapping. This ties right into your main gimmick, being overtaken by a Void Scent. It combines its power with yours for a super mode, a super mode that also is a speedy section like Machinist, all with similar weaving needed, but much less of it. So it's a bit more ping friendly. You also tend to do it less often than Machinist. On the average, I'd sum up Reaper as an easier Machinist, but also a melee. It's got more pure style and satisfying effects for effects sake. It's simple to pick up even for starting at level 70, and quickly becomes a very smooth and cool job. But of course, being simple and fun is bad, so let's slot this into the S rank slot. Warrior is such a weak and dumb job. For all the healing Paladin has built in, Warrior is much more healing based. A powerful self-heal OGCD on a short cooldown, some other strong cooldowns, and the single strongest short cooldown in the game for a casual player. It used to also have the best AoE in the game with a cone, but that's been changed to a circle unfortunately. But that's okay, because AoE is where the god tier skill is most useful. This specific brand of Invuln skill also synergizes it extremely well with the healing based toolkit. It's probably the tank with the all around best synergy within its own toolkit, but along with some great party synergy too. Their main gimmick is being extremely angry and some very, very light gauge management. But being angry allows them to do extremely big hits for a short time. It's overall probably the easiest tank to play even without its strong toolkit. So in summary, strong defensives even in high-end content, even stronger in casual content, and a very angry, self-healing tank. How does any of this make Warrior weak? Because it does, shut up. And so we put it into the S rank tier. S for shut up. More worthless is the job you should never unlock, Sage. Sage is Scholar Light, some very similar abilities, but just as many differences in its playstyle. All without the fairy that Scholar has, but replacing it with something potentially better. I personally find this far more enjoyable than Scholar as well, to the point of being my main healer pick. The main gimmicks are Eucrasia and Cardia. Cardia is like Dan's dance partner. Put this on a player, and every time you do damage, they get healed a bit. This is more consistent than the fairy, but less flexible. Far more controllable too. Eucrasia itself cuts down on some button count with making it augment select skills into a second variety, mostly turning basic heals into shielding ones and your attack into a dot. You have a lot of flexibility in your toolkit. Eucrasia or not, tons of OGCD defensive skills, a healing resource that also regens your mana. Where Scarlet might feel rigid and difficult, Sage tends to just have a flow state once you get it. Lack of pet jank the way they gain their resources, and how some of their specific skills are sent out make it relatively easier to get into the flow with. But by starting at level 70, the learning curve is pretty rough. If Scala never clicked for you, you'll have a learning period, but potentially finally get how a technical job like this plays. It also sadly has a lower general power level to Scholar. It can do some very good defending, but you won't be seeing 60k shields out of it. In summary, it's very similar to Scholar, but has its own unique aspects. 
A rough learning curve, especially if you don't like Scholar, but very much learnable. This learning curve is why you should never play it. As a result, we're putting it into the S rank tier. On the opposite end of the spectrum is Summoner. It's just so terrible. It has little to no learning curve at all. For as simple as Dancer is, Summoner makes Dancer look like the most complex thing ever. Lowest button count in the game by far, and your learning curve is all of 20 levels or so. You do one small addition here or there, but by 22, you are pretty much done. You have three layers to Summoner. Base form, with only really one button you touch, depending on single target or AoE. Super form, which has one to three buttons, depending on what level you are. And then Lego form has about five or six. Three of those buttons is just picking which Lego you are playing with, so two or three. And yet the job flows together well. The main gimmick is your forms, being self-contained sections of your rotation. They're also your summons that do big attacks. Big attacks meaning you have pretty good DPS for being such a simple job. The overall rotation is almost completely cyclical too. You have maybe two filler attacks per full rotation. Oh, and you have almost no cast times, despite being a caster. Summarily, big damage, but otherwise very simple. You really do just go through the motions, but it ends up being satisfying somehow. But also that lack of learning curve makes the job absolute trash. Which is why I'm going to rank it with an S tier. Dragoon is my main, and is one of the worst jobs ever created. Why do I play it? Well, people often complain about the jumps and their locking animations. Especially back in the day when they actually had lengthy locks. I say these locks were good, because it pointed you to being a bad Dragoon if you had problems with it. The jumps and their locks had a similar situation to Black Mage. Mastery of jumps meant mastery of a fight, but to a much lesser degree. You had to be willing to push yourself into dangerous situations, and yes, take a few deaths. But you learned by doing where not to use jump. And so the deaths stop happening as often, because you learned. Then it becomes you are dying one time to test the waters of if you can fit in a jump in a very risky spot. You're not dying from lack of knowledge, but an attempt to gain more. Dragoon is also a job I commonly refer to as a train. Your rotation is extremely static with doing the same two combos back and forth, but this gives Dragoon an edge you can't really find with most other jobs. It just fits together so smoothly and ends up being satisfying. Some might find this boring though, despite Dragoon's hyper focus on having a ton of OGCD buttons to push. You may never have the speed of a machinist, but your OGCD spamming sections are quite a fun ride. It also helps that somehow they keep making Dragoon super good to the point of being meta or just barely off meta. So in summary, Dragoon is extremely smooth and static as a general statement. It makes for a very consistent playstyle. You'll need to be willing to learn and hold your ground when it comes to jumps. But when you do, you gain a deeper level of general encounter understanding, while also being a near meta job. Which makes it bad. Everyone hates meta, so the job is trash. So let's put it in the trash pile, an S rank job. On the heavy armor side, we have Dark Knight. Edgy and dumb and stupid and don't ever play it. While Paladin is more magically inclined, Dark Knight has a bit of its own, while also being the only tank to have a magical defensive cooldown like Dark Mind. Sure, you have party wide magic mitigation, but that's for the party, not you. Dark Knight is also up there for being the busiest tank, even if not being the most DPS-like. Your openers are extremely intense at level cap, while also it being good to open up some slots for defensive cooldowns, but it ends up looking super slick and fun, if openers like that are your thing at least. Your main mechanics are Dark Side and the Blood Gauge. Dark Side is a passive attack boost that gets extended from using your magical OGCD skills. They cost a lot of mana, so you need to properly pace them if you want to make the optimal use, putting them in openers. Blood Gauge, meanwhile, is very similar to that of Warrior. You have an angry phase where you can spam your Blood Gauge spenders, and you gain resources at the same rate just about. But it feels different enough. You also have the Blackest Knight, one of the absolute best skills in the game. It gives you or an ally a pretty powerful shield. When it breaks, it gives you 
one free use of one of your attacking mana spenders. Both cost 3000 MP, so it ends up being a full refund on top of the HP you gained out of it. So in summary, Dark Knight is very busy. It gets good DPS out of the busy play and has unique cooldowns to put it on a level the other tanks can only hope to reach. It's got a bit of an edge, but puts some good style on that edge. And maybe one day TBN will regain its title firmly for being the best single skill in the game. But having a skill that good is bad. Tanks aren't supposed to have HP. Their job is to lose it, not keep it. S rank tier. Bard is the last and very much least of the ranged jobs. It's just bad. It's probably the most complex of the ranged jobs. It's a job more on the support end of things. It's a dot based job with a button dedicated to refreshing it and three different songs that work as stances. This is the main gimmick of Bard. Your songs give party buffs and also change your job gauge's effect. One gives you stacks of a separate skill, another refreshes the cooldown of another pair of skills, and the third speeds up your base GCD for the duration. The difficulty comes in with properly timing how long you stay in these forms, swapping at the right times and knowing when to hold. All on top of your other buttons with lots of short OGCD timers and keeping your dot timers going. It always feels like you have a lot to keep track of, even at the times you have nothing to be worrying about. The flow is initially hard to find, ironic for the music job, but there is a flow you can find and will be rewarded for it. It feels very consistently active and fun versus something like Machinist and its more speedy bursts. Once you find the flow, your burst and fitting things into the overall rotation feel smooth. So in summary, it's a busy support job. Cycle through your songs at the right times and adjust your reaction slightly within those songs. Keep your dots running and don't forget to check your other OGCD timers. But this weird mishmash of things is why the job is so terrible and not worth your time. It's merely an S rank job. Samurai has always been known to be a bad job. Just ask everyone in Stormblood blocking it from their party finders, despite everyone in that party doing less DPS than your average Samurai player. High DPS is a cancer, we don't want that, which is exactly what Samurai is here for, being the selfish melee DPS. Call it the weeb job if you want, while not understanding what that word even means, but it really does fit the Samurai aesthetic well, all while having some very big hits. The cost of these big and cool hits is a short cast time, but it's nowhere near the same level of something like Black Mage. Usually hard to beat a cast at having cast times. The main gimmick of Samurai is EI Jutsu. Each of your combos will give you a different Sen or symbol. The number of different symbols changes your EI Jutsu from Dot to AoE to super powerful singular hit. Later on, it can even combo into a second version of the same EI Jutsu you just used. There's also the Kenki Gauge that gives you resources to spend, but this seems to be something that is due for a complete overhaul. You mostly only use this on one or two skills, and not even like other jobs that do that. But at least, each of those skills is fun to see executed. So in summary, Samurai follows the rule of cool. Every attack looks and feels smooth, hits hard, and is plain fun to execute just as a default. It's pretty simple on the surface, but has some pretty fun complexities when you want to get into it deeper. But complex things are dumb, so we're gonna put it where all dumb things go. S rank. Astrologian is by far the hardest healer to play, and being hard is what makes something a bad job and not worth trying. You have the most buttons of the healers and often feel like you have to do the most work for the same healer effect. With the exception of your Earthly Galaxy skill, because my god that skill is just too good. This lack of power, feel-wise, is made up for with just how flexible the toolkit feels. While it might take you two to three buttons to feel like you had the needed effect, you have enough buttons and the flexibility with those buttons to choose the right ones per situation. Buttons 1, 5, and 3 might be what you call for in situation A, but you could do 1, 2, and 4 for the next situation. It's a trade-off that kind of works in its favor. The main gimmick is playing Yu-Gi-Oh! You draw cards that give damage buffs to allies, and the seals on those cards can give you buffs when getting the right ones. You have several ways to reduce the RNG of cards, but it's still very random, and you gotta have good luck to maximize the use. Luckily, the losses for bad RNG aren't too bad. However, these cards always feel like they're in a state of flux anymore, 
the best version of cards are years gone now, and the solution high-end players supposedly asked for of make every card up damage put them into a pretty unfun state, all while having way too many buttons for that simple of an effect. It ends up being the thing players get stuck on while trying to land the job, which already seems hard to learn. In summary, Astrologian is a very complex and very flexible healer. It has few plainly powerful tools, but those tools are very strong. The technical elements are many, and the cards are a big part of it, for better or worse. And worse it is! Avoid this job, and put it into S rank. Red Mage oozes style, and style is the worst thing a job could have. Avoid at all costs, lest you pick the fanciest job around. Not every actual skill animation is top tier fancy, but the feel and attitude of Red Mage puts it into the top of that aspect. The actual rotation is pretty stylish and all about balance. You need to swap between white and black magic to keep up a unique mana gauge you have, different from the MP bar used to cast spells. Keeping balanced and making use of your dual cast ability to cut cast times to zero are absolutely key. This includes your party member Raze, making you the best at helping healers pick up bodies. Just don't think Vakir follows that same rule. All the same issues Paladin has with their heal follow here too. It's good when it's actually useful, but many people will use it to help out the healer when nobody needed healing. Though you can't heal anybody's eyes after you use Red Mage Limit Break 3. Your main mechanic is that gauge you have to balance, and how you spend it. In addition to the style you have with your job gear and special animations, you are part melee for your rotation. You have a three-part sword combo that then slowly gets upgraded to lead into a three-part magic combo. You basically become Zoro, who then blasts you with magic. In summary, you have a stylish job all about balance. A balanced rotation between magic and melee, a balance of support and power, and balanced and fun. But can anything be truly fun if it's not imbalanced in some way? So the job is garbage. Don't play it. Put it in S tier. The last and least tank is Gunbreaker. What makes it so much lesser of a tank? It's the most DPS-like. Its rotation very much feels like a simple DPS, arguably still more complex than even Summoner. All on top of this, you still need to be a tank. It can still be less busy outright compared to Dark Knight, but is otherwise a busy and DPS-light job. That would even be what I consider to be the main mechanic of Gunbreaker. Your gauge is your powder cartridges, which are all used for doing attacks. In a different way to the other jobs, because one is a full combo with its own cooldown. Keeping resources and timing consistent for things like this are key. You also have a bunch of different cooldowns that allow for some good flexibility. Heart of Corundum also gets pretty damn good when you know how to use it well, but overall they all seem like a footnote to what makes Gunbreaker the job it is. Even the invuln is just not too unique but at least you have a lot of explosions. And that's the summary of Gunbreaker. Cool explosions, feels the most DPS-like, but otherwise doesn't have any major unique elements you might point to for someone to see it as their job they would want to play beyond those. Not that anyone should play it, it's a bad job. s rank tier at best. The final melee is Ninja. Don't touch it if you like to play this game. This is another fast job with what may be the busiest opener in the game. You have a clone and debuffs and hand sign combos that are way faster than even your basic attack, and it's a lot. But your efforts are rewarded. Those hand signs are called Mudra and are the main gimmick of the job. There are seven different Mudra, and you want to know them all. This includes the speed buff Ninja has, seven skills across only three buttons, and a fourth to confirm your selected combo. This allows Ninja to be a complex job without a high button count, but still has a lot of other buttons. Main combo, Ninki skills, the debuff skills, there's a lot there to learn. But outside your opener, you have very little to do. It's basically filler and opener, and nothing else in between. But your Mudra can also be used for flexibility. You lose a use in the opener, but are able to keep uptime and not miss any attack time. This tends to be in your interest, making Ninja a flexible job as well. This is on top of your movement, which is higher as a base. Makes needing sprint for risky strats less of a thing. You also come with a pet rabbit. Not even the pet jobs get that. Though Corby is better. Wrong Corby. To sum up Ninja, 
It's busy in burst, but idle most other times. It gives you a bit of flexibility and speed both in movement and attacking. Just be ready for a bunch of pattern recognition if you want to do well with it. Not that it can do well, it's merely an S-rank job. Our last and final job is the most basic of the basic, White Mage. Don't even bother with it. If you're a fan of Final Fantasy, you are very familiar with White Mage. Extremely simple heals, but also simply powerful. You don't really have any fancy tricks. You take heal, you apply heal. You do have one or two skills that do a little more, but generally, you might say it's the least flexible of the healers. Again, it doesn't necessarily have no flexibility, but simplicity can be king for some people. You can't understand the other healers because of more complex toolkits or playstyles? White Mage is pure simplicity and makes it just that much more learnable for a newbie. This includes skills like Benediction, which is simply full heal. Your main gimmick is the Lily Gauge. This allows you to use, you guessed it, strong heals. But the benefit of these is no cast time. Sure, your heals are strong, but moving while using them is impossible. So Lilies, and another skill or two, fit into this niche. Then the more stationary situations, you have pure power after the cast time. You're also the only job to have a healing bush. So in summary, White Mage is simply simple, but you get some good healing power. What you lack in flexibility, you have strong straight up heals that keep people alive. Sure, you lack shielding power like Scholar, but if someone needs to be healed, you're right on top of it. But simplicity is bad. That's why we're relegating White Mage to the S rank tier. As you can see, every job in the game is absolute trash. Well, except for one. This is where the S plus rank Blue Mage comes in. Every job pales in comparison to it. The only issue is that it is a limited job. That puts it into its own subcategory. It can't join roulettes or normal content. You need to do unsynced parties or full pre-mades. But that's also a benefit I'll get into. A lot of players come into the game expecting to grind enemies to level up. Blue Mage is the only job that allows for this and is the actual intended way to level it. It's also the single job that is most faithful to the original. You don't have any skills as a Blue Mage. None. Your first one, gained via the first quest, is a simple water spurt from a monster. Everything from then on is also learned from monsters. Eye searing, exploding with fire and lightning, and even blowing yourself up. All learned from monsters. This is how Blue Mage has always been, and keeps it extra unique to other jobs. Finding and learning all these skills is also an exercise in mastery, since you must survive to see said attack. Beyond that, since Blue Mage can't do normal content, it has its own. The Masked Carnival includes over 30 challenging fights and puzzles to do, with weekly rewards too for further challenges. Some of the most fun challenges in the game are within this content, but it doesn't stop there. There's the Blue Mage Log, a list of basically every duty for you to do in a full party of synced Blue Mages. Can you learn how to defeat this savage level fight with zero tanks and zero healers? All Blue Mage? Yes, because you get a Morble mount as a reward. Unique mounts, even. Blue Mage rating is an entire different spin on fights you may love or hate already that could turn your opinion around in either direction. It really challenges you and forces you to rethink how you do these fights. A fight that had role-based debuff? Well, that healer debuff can't go on healers that don't exist, so here you go, random Blue Mage F. You have to rethink so many things when trying to Blue Mage raid. You have to become more flexible to deal with the random and dynamic changes raids have. And all with only 24 skill slots. You can't take every skill, so you need to actively plan your toolkit across the 100 plus skills you can use. And then you end up building really strong, really complex openers with their own downsides. There's so much to this job. It really does come into a level of its own. That's why it's the only good job in the game. S plus rank? Way above the trash in the lowly S rank. Wait a minute. Thank you for watching the summary of all the jobs in the game. Rate, comment, sub, Patreon, all that stuff if you'd like to support my videos. Or you can buy the new shirt in my spread shop. It's the rankings of all the jobs I just did using the Wesk faces from my artist T. Go follow them on Twitter too. 
I hope it came across very quickly that this video was satire mixed with genuine summaries of the jobs. Unlike certain film and donkey based YouTubers, I actually made an attempt to make the satire parts obvious and the real comments not mixed too much in and muddled. To be clear, I don't think every job sucks. I just think that a lot of players are going to get lost in all the down and meta talk that they lose sight of what matters. Having fun. Balance can always be better, but the hyperbole I've seen in recent days has painted things in a way more black and white situation than it is. And I don't necessarily mean the people making videos either. I use their thumbnails as a joke at the start of this, but that is as far as it goes. I don't want to be seen as misrepresenting their arguments, since they're not inherently who I mean. There's a lot of people who play this game, and a non-zero number of them who just parrot what they hear without context. I don't want to go back to that samurai comment. Samurais were really locked out of party finders. Extreme party finders, where comp didn't matter that much because it had a more diluted pool of players. Meanwhile, every samurai main I personally knew was super good, better than any of these random bozos, and was ostracized for their job choice. I'm not even someone who's in the meta circles, and if every samurai I knew personally was this skilled, well then maybe people were just being stupid. And they were. Point is, just go have fun. Pick the job you like. Stop being shitty to people for playing off-meta jobs in a fresh prog party. I don't want to deal with that garbage again. And when the Dragoon, one of the most consistently meta jobs in the game and isn't locked out of anything ever, is telling you to stop, you know you did things a bit wrong. Most of the people taking the meta talk as gospel are they themselves not skilled enough to benefit from it? If you are one of those players who can benefit from meta, good for you. This wasn't for you. This is about the other 99% of the player base who will see the bleeding hearts and think this is another WoW situation. I want to avoid that. Anyway, take care and may the power of Anna did Hogsley waste to your enemies. And an extra special thanks to all my patrons over on Patreon, with an extra special thanks going out to... Ashtree Dweller, Eamon Alktib, Benjamin Hahn, Benjamin Haynes, Benjamin Rice, Sidia Diosasan, Serex, Ethan Olson, Ethan W, Fraser97, James Hall, Jericho, Mizella, Nick Griffin, T Rogue, Timmy, and Zero Two. Thanks again! Pick the job you enjoy, and enjoy the game to the fullest.